holy. The Lord God is holy. Amen. The Lord God is what? Holy. And so we want to lift him up. We want to glorify him. We want to adore him. In the book of Malachi, as you heard it read, you will see how God is so angry with the priest. God is so angry what? With the priest. In the book of Malachi, the entire chapter of the book of Malachi, because of the priest, the wrath of God came upon the whole nation. The whole nation of Israel. Because the priest had compromised the word of God, twisted the word of God, corrupted the word of God. Too often you hear pastor preach, and I mention pastors, and some get offended because they say, I don't have to. So you can see clearly, these are prophets. Jeremiah, the book of Ezekiel chapter 34, spoke at length on the same thing. In the book of 2 Corinthians, is the same thing. And what you see in there is that sin, sin drives in a nation or in a city when those who are supposed to be Christians, who are supposed to be God's people, compromise what? The truth. So in the book of Second Chronicles, the word of God says, if I bring judgment upon a nation, he says, if my people who are called by my word, name, they have to repent, which means that we are the cause of the problem. We are supposed to be the light of the earth. We are supposed to be the salt. If we fail to shine our light, sin does what? Tribes. When we fail to shine our light, sin what? Tribes. And when in the pulpit, we are shy, we shy from telling the truth. When we don't call sin a sin. Hello? When we don't call sin a sin and we lower the standard of holiness because we want a crowd, sin, that's what? Thrives. And that is the world that we are living in today. In the days of Israel, those days, the priest corrupted the work of God. In offering, in sacrifices, God is saying that they brought rotten sacrifices. To the extent that God challenged them to go and give it to their governor and see if the governor will accept it. In chapter 2 of the same, he talks about how they debased almost everything. To the point that they were calling the table of God contemptible. And because of that, the whole Israel also treated God's temple with contempt. Contempt. That was what was going on in Israel. So much so that God was angry with them. God even called them thieves. Why? Because they kept back the tithes and offering. Why was that so? Because the congregation, the members of the nation, the citizen, saw how corrupt the priests were. And because of that, they became discouraged. And so, like the priest, they were also doing what? The same thing. That's what you found in the book of Malachi. So God talks about how he took note of those few amongst them who feared God. And they encouraged one another to do that which was what? Right. And so the Bible says, God opened a book of remembrance and wrote their names in. And he said he was going to prepare a jewel for them so that a day is coming when one will be able to distinguish between one who fears God and one who didn't what? Fear. One who reverence God and one who didn't what? Reverence him. My beloved, this is a clear picture of what we see today in our world. It's a clear picture. Everything that you see in the Old Testament is a picture that God is giving to us to show us how he dealt with those who treated him with contempt in the Old. So that those of us who are living in this last age will not copy or will not emulate what they what did. Are you all with me? 
This is what it is. You know, we live in a day and time you have people talking about, oh, grace, grace, grace. Well, thank God for grace. But grace is not cheap. Grace is not cheap. Mama Philo, is grace cheap? If it is cheap, you can show me where I can buy some. Hallelujah. Grace is not what? Cheap. Grace calls God his only son. Grace caused God to have to watch, look as if it were, he was helpless or could not do anything. He looked and saw his son, watched his son painfully die on the cross. That was grace. The cost of grace. Why did he have to go through that? Did he have to go through that so that you and I will wallow in sin and say grace, grace? Did he have to go through that so that you and I will be swallowing sin, carrying sin, swimming in sin, taking a shower in sin, jogging in sin, driving in sin, dining in sin, snacking in sin, and still point and say grace? No, that is not why he came to die. He came to die to deliver you and I from the bondage of sin. He came to die so that by his blood he will purify us so that when we walk through the streets of this wilderness called world, people will be without us opening our mouth, seeing our life, suddenly will be convicted and they will surrender their life to, to Jesus Christ. But is that the case now? No. That's not the case. That is not the case and that was not the case in the book of Malachi. The people became so, con they were driven to con contempt. They treated God's work with great contempt. Some even say that it is a waste of time to serve God. That was what they were saying in the book of Malachi. It's a waste of time. And today it is the same. People say it is a waste of time to serve who? God. Why? Because right from the pulpit, we are comparing ourselves with Hollywood. So if people are holy, at Hollywood are billionaires, we also have to be what? Billionaires, never mind how they got to that place. Wickedness thrives amongst us because of the fact that we who call the name of the Lord have failed to uphold his tenets of holiness and righteousness. We have compromised and we keep on compromising. We call that which is wrong, right, and that which is right, wrong. Pride has entered into our hearts. Remember the Bible says that pride goes before what? The fall. In the book of Malachi, it talks about those who are proud are the ones who are what? Elevated. And that is what you find in our world today. Those who are proud. Those who can say that there is no God are the ones who are what? Promoted. Those who can invent iniquity, invent sin, are those who are what? Promoted. Can you imagine how we can take that which is holy? The rainbow, the rainbow. Rainbow is an emblem of holiness. It's an emblem of God that God used to show to the whole world that he is not going to destroy the world again with water. But he didn't say that I am not going to destroy the world again. He said, I am not going to destroy the world again with what? Water. So, if you read the book of Revelation, around the throne, around the throne of God, is a rainbow. Rainbow drapes is draped around the throne of God. But we live in a world today where this holy emblem of God has been so desecrated, has been so what? Desecrated to the delight even of church the delight of those who are supposed to know holiness. Proud. Proud. Pride has entered our hearts to the extent that if we call a day, a month, Pride Month, which what, what the Bible says, pride leads to what? A fall. What are you proud of? Proud of sin, proud of perverseness, proud of abomination, proud of anything that is contemptible to God. Why is this so? It's because we who call our 
ourselves Christians have failed to uphold the basic tenets of holiness. We have. When we are busy building commercial houses to warehouse the people we call our customers, people who are supposed to be God's flock and God's sheep, we are building what? Warehouses. As the book of Jeremiah will say, Jeremiah chapter 5 and Isaiah talks about the they have warehouses and they catch men. And we extort money from them to build comfortable mansions and fly in private jet planes declaring that we are what? Prophets. Well, we are not. Now, those who get offended because I have to preach on this, go ahead and continue. Because we have to understand, the Bible says, he who speaks must speak the oracle of what? Of God. And as long as it is in the word of God, it has to be proclaimed. Sin is striving today because of us. That is why the book of Peter says that judgment must begin at the house of God. Judgment will begin with us. It will begin with us. It will begin with us. God's son Jesus Christ did not die cheap. It caused him pain. It caused Jesus Christ pain. His palm. Six, how many? Inches. Nail. Thick. Driven through his palm. Two of his palms. Two. Both. His feet. The same. Two of his feet. Put together. Nail driven through, clipped to a tree. In the meantime, his body has already been mad with whippings. Flesh tearing off his body. Blood pouring out of his body. Not only that, the crown of thorn on his head. Pain all over him. Did he go through all that for you and I to rejoice and glory in sin? That's the question. Did Christ have to go? My beloved, my prayer is that you and I will have. What did Jeremiah said? He said he pains in what? In his heart. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you cannot afford but weep when you see where the world is going. You cannot, but what? Weep. But the fault lays at the feet of those of us who call ourselves what? Christians. Because we don't see anything wrong with what the world is what? Doing. In fact, we swim along with the world. Whatever comes on the market of the world, we are there to what? Get. It doesn't matter how much it costs will spend our hard earned money that God gave us power to make on those things and deny God of what belongs to what? Him. In the book of Malachi he said it. So you have robbed me the whole nation. And they said in what? And they said in tithes and what? In offerings. In tithes and what? In offering. My beloved Jesus Christ is coming. Is coming. It may seem as if it is taking long, but you know who is scoffing at this? It is the philosophers, the scientists, those of whom we and I have put so much faith in, thinking that they have the answers to the world. We've put so much faith and trust in whatever they say is what we want. We do. The philosopher says that a man can call himself a woman and we say that is fine. But when God who created you says no, you say there is no what? God. Jesus Christ. On a hot sunny day like this, he hung on the cross for you and I. On a hot sunny day, hot, he had already carried that heavy tree cross carried it, falling in between, falling, he was falling. The 
had already lashed him, pain all over his body, and he's carrying. Can you imagine? How can you carry this? He carried it, and when he fell down, they whipped him. When he fell down, they whipped him until Simon came along. He carried it for him. In the meantime, on his head, there's no soundness. A crown of thorn made a little smaller than his head and forced down so that all the thorns piercing into his skull, blood gush flowing all over his eyes. So Paul said, God, he said, that I may know him, the fellowship of his suffering. Paul says, I want to experience that suffering, the fellowship of his what? suffering. How many of us want to also experience that? Because it will take that to make you understand what Jesus Christ had to go through. Then from now on, when you are before God praying, you'll be broken. Because every thought of him will cause you to be in contrition, brokenness, brokenness, brokenness. Then you will not have any desire for the things of this world. Then there is him this song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. The problem is that we are not fixed on Jesus Christ. Our hearts, our eyes, our everything is fixed on this world. So anything that the world offers us, we swallow it, hook, sink, hook, line, and what? And sink. As a rod, we, we swallow it all, and we are in competition with the world. Malachi is saying, and then Jeremiah comes in and says, Woe unto us, the pastors. He's talking to Pastor Pimpon, and all those of us who call ourselves what pastors, woe unto the pastors who speak from their belly and say, It is God speaking. There are so many of them around. Lying prophecies. You are going to be rich. And we told you that so that you can give them all the money that is in your bank account. Lying. God says that you build this big mansion. God didn't say that. God didn't say that. Because we don't know God's word, we go along. But in the word of God, Isaiah chapter 66, he said, what kind of building can you build for me? The building that God wants us to build is the souls that are wandering in the streets who need to be redeemed because God wants to live in our bodies. Our bodies are the temple of the living God. That is where he wants to stay. Not in those big whatever. That somebody wants to build so that everybody can say, that is the building that I put up. And God says, that is not where I'm going to be. He said, away from it. Away with it. A warehouse of customers of yours. That's God's word. He said the prophets and the priests in the book of Jeremiah 23. He said they lie. That's what the word of God didn't say that. For those who get offended, God's word says, go and ask God. Go and ask the Holy Spirit. Why are you saying that they are lies? When somebody stands and says, I won't preach against sin because sin is already, come on. God will never say that. And yet those are the ones who have inflated their congregation so big and they are so popular. And so many of us run after them and we read their books also. Compromised book. So you become an accomplice. You become what? An accomplice. Accomplice in their crime because you have made them rich and they continue to lie and you swallow it and swallow it and swallow it. Why? Because so many of us have become so lazy. The word of God, the Bible is right there. You don't want to get on your knees. You don't want to get pray. You don't want to seek God. Jesus said that my Holy Spirit will do what? Teach you. The Holy Spirit will do what? Teach you. Get on your knees. This morning, the Lord woke me up at 1 o'clock. He woke me up at 1 o'clock. I had gone to sleep around 11 and 12. So 1 o'clock was a little too early. When I woke up, when he woke me up, my Georgia, <laughs> I went to, excuse me, to the bathroom. When I came back, went back to lay down. And 
I laid down then, three o'clock, he woke me back again. I, I got up and said, I'm going to sleep early again. Then, inside of me was a new song. I said, well, I'll sleep. When I wake up, I will then, I'll, and then he said, you remember that when you wake up, you forget it. Suddenly, I jumped. And I went and took, took the cell phone. Quickly, I recorded the song. When I recorded, I said, now, get on your knees. There are many people who you have to pray for. So get on your knees. And I'm still up. And I've gone to walk 6.5 miles already. And I'm here by the grace of God. My beloved, the Lord loves us so much. He loves us so much that he doesn't want any one of us to be misled. Please. He doesn't want any one of us to be what? Misled. Those of us who become angry. I remember Mama Georgia spoke to some of our young girls. That was many years ago. Telling them about the way they carry themselves. The, the parents got angry. One by one they left the church with their children. God loves you and does not want this pastor pimple to mislead any one of you. No, 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 no. No, no, no. The truth is what you and I need. Because at the end, when I die, the question is, where am I going to spend what? Eternity. That is why God is coming down hard on us, the pastors. Because we have the flock that belongs to God and not belong to me. Hello? The flock don't belong to who? Pastor Pimpo. They belong to God. You came here not because of me. You came here because of who? God. And I am here not because of me. I am here because of who? God. And as a messenger of God, I have to only say what God wants me to what? Say. Because that is what your soul needs and that is what my soul needs. Because at the end of the day, I am going to also give account of myself to God. And for me, it's going to be very, very serious. Because if I mislead any one of you, it's going to be a multitude that I'm leading to what? Hell. That is why it is so grieving, very, very grievous. When you have somebody dictating and telling you, oh, you shouldn't have said it, shouldn't have said it. No, 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 no. You have to say what God says you should say. He said, woe well, unto the pastors who steal my message from their fellow man. Do you know how many people go on the internet to look for messages to preach? And then we sit there, we have pen and paper right there. Yeah, and jumping and jumping. People just walk off the street because they see that the easiest way to make money is to say that you are what? A minister. And so, so many of us have been misled. So many. Let me read what Paul had to say in the book of 2 Corinthians. So that you could see that it is not only Pastor People speaking this. Listen to this one. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Please make sure you open your Bible so that you will not say that it is Pastor Pimpo who is saying it. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 12. Paul has come against, he has come under scrutiny and all kinds of, what do you call it? Maybe criticism. So he speaks here in verse 12. He said, but what I do, that I will what? Do. Paul says, I'm not going to change my message that God has given to me because you are scrutinizing me or because you are criticizing me. I will speak and say what God says. He says that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are what? Please, are you reading your Bible? Don't, please, please, don't. For such are what? False what? Prophets. This is in the New Testament. There are false prophets. Such are false what? Prophets. 
transformer and deceitful what? Workers. They are false prophets and they are deceitful what? Workers. Transforming themselves into the apostles of what? Christ. Can you imagine that? Transforming themselves into apostles of what? Christ. So everyone and anyone who comes along that I'm a prophet, I'm, a, I'm an apostle, please don't just jump to bed with them. And when I say jumping into bed with them, don't try to be unequally what? Yoked with them. Not in marriage. I'm talking about when you follow them. It is just like you are jumping into bed what? With them. Say transforming themselves into an angel of what? Of light. Or transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel. Verse 14. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of what? Light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. This is what Paul said. Paul, in his time, preached against all these kind of things. And it has not stopped. In fact, it has become even greater worse in our days now. It has become what? Worse. That is why the Lord will want me again to warn his flock. God's what? Flock. You are God's flock. We are living in the last days. This is not the time to joke with sin. This is not the time to become careless, to let down your what? Your God. This is not the time to be changing, to say, ah, Pastor Pimpo is always preaching on holiness. I don't want to be here. I want to be at the place where we can have what? Fun. Where there is elevation. Hello? Where there is what? Elevation. Come as you are. You can dress as you are. You can whatever it is you are and give God a high five. No, our God cannot be mocked. He is a holy God. Our God cannot be what? Mocked. Is that true? Our God cannot what? Be mocked. We cannot mock him. We cannot make a mockery of God. Our God is a holy God. Our God is a righteous God. In fact, do you know what God said? He said he made Jesus Christ. Listen to this one. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Listen to it. It's chapter 6. He said he made Jesus Christ to be what? Sin. Who knew no what? Sin. Second Corinthians chapter 5. He made Jesus Christ to be sin. Who, who knew no sin? So that you and I will become the righteousness of what? Of God. That is a high, high calling. God let his son suffer on the cross as though he had committed sin. Why? For the sole purpose of transforming you into his what? Righteousness. Transforming you and I into his righteousness. But are we willing and have we been willing to allow him to transform us to become what he wants us to be in righteousness and in holiness? Because that is what is going to take for you and I to enter into the place called what? Heaven. Heaven is real. And I have to preach it every day I stand here. Heaven is here. Why do I have to? Because a second, in a second, you and I can be called. And I don't want any one of us to die not hearing from me that there is a place called hell and what? Heaven. Because one day I am going to give account to God. It's not about your money. No, no, no. It's not about your money. When I talk about it's not about your money, I don't, I don't want to make money what? the subject of God's work. I started that many years back in Ghana and I will not stop it because God warned me. He told me money should not be the subject of the message. Money shouldn't be. Wednesday now we don't take offering, do we? Friday now we don't take offering, do we? And when we even take for on Sunday, how many times? You, you go ten, around 10 times. 20 times. No. Once. If it is only one dollar, that is enough. We thank God for it. It is not about money. It is about your soul. And if you don't appreciate this, 
My beloved, there are many false teachers and false prophets who want, are ready to take advantage of you. You can go there. Hello? They will have all kinds of programs. Hello? All kinds of what? On one Sunday, they have our 10 programs. And you have to attend all of it. And for every one of them, you have to give what? Offering. For every one of them, you have to give offering. And we love that because we don't want to hear the word of what? Truth. We don't want to hear the word that tells us what God wants us what? To hear. We don't want the words that will make us uncomfortable. In the book of Jeremiah, he said, my word is like fire. It does what? It burns. It is like hammer. It is what? It breaks. It is like knife, two edges knife. It has to cut. We don't want that. That is what Malachi, the priest, did because they knew the psyche of the people. They had to tell them what they want to what hear. But in so doing, that aroused God's anger and God's wrath, and God came down heavily on them. Today, the Lord is calling all of us, all of us, those who have joined by way of YouTube and Facebook and the website. God is calling us calling us out of the wilderness of what? Of sin. Out of the wilderness of compromising. Out of the wilderness of being unequally yoked with the things of this world. Out of the wilderness of what the, the so-called, what they call, they, 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 they call it this day. So we are in enlightenment. Enlightenment. That is not enlightenment. It is gloom and darkness. You can wrap yourself in the rainbow all you want. It is darkness. It is corruption. It is abominable. It is a sin. It is filth. It is what? Filth. There is hell and there is what? Heaven. And the Lord is calling all of us. All of us. He's calling us out. Calling us what? Out. Out. Second Corinthians chapter 6. It says, wherefore, come out from amongst them. 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 And what is Satan saying? Inclusiveness. Inclusiveness. When God says, come out, the Antichrist, Lucifer, is saying, inclusiveness. Inclusiveness. We are living in the days and time that you and I have to have our eyes circumcised. The scales fall off our eyes, the cock removed from our ears, so we can hear voice, the voice of God so clearly and be able to see the way God is leading us and be able to discern. Because without discernment, my friend, so many of us will go along. So many of us will do what? We'll go along. We'll go along. We are living in those days. The days when sin has increased. The Bible says in the last days, iniquity shall what? Increase. And the love of many for Christ will do what? Grow cold. Wax cold. And so many of us, our love for Christ has what? Waxing what? Cold. Our love for Christ has waxing what? Cold. We have become so lukewarm. Indifferent to the work of God. We go whenever we want. We pray whenever we, in fact, if we pray at all. It is more about carnality than is it about what? Spirit, spiritual. My prayer for all of us, all of us, including Pastor Pimpon, my prayer for all of us, let us rise up, like Jesus Christ says, let us rise up and go. The prince of this world is coming. He has nothing what? In me. May we be bold enough. May we be bold enough to be able to say, let us rise up and what? Go. The prince of this world is coming. He has nothing in me. He's nothing in me. But if you have examined yourself and found that he has something in you, the Lord is calling you to do what? Repent. 
to turn from us. We have to repent and turn from it. Jesus Christ died so that he will set you and I free. That is why when we come to him and cry unto him, he does not kick us away. Rather, he says, I am more than willing to forgive. And I'll forgive you. I'll wash you. I'll cleanse you from all. It is a sum. From what? All unrighteousness. So there goes those of us who say, God is not through with me yet. He said, when you confess your sins, I am faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, to wash you from 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. It is there. If we repent, this is the hour of repentance. This is the generation of what? Repentance. We have to repent and turn from our wicked ways. We have to repent and turn from our wicked ways. Jesus Christ is coming soon. But his coming is going to be, there is going to be a, 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 a forerunner to that. Where you have the Antichrist, the Antichrist who is going to come. And his spirit is already here. And he's going to make demands of you and I. He's going to make demands of you and I. Even as at now. If you don't fly that, what they, they call flag, the desecrated rainbow of the most high God, the rainbow that represents the holiness of God that has been so desecrated. Some of us are being, being, make, you are being asked to fly it over your business. If you don't fly it, they call you a hater. And then they blacklist you and blackmail you. We are living in those days of the Antichrist. He has, his spirit is already here. You preach against that sin, you are called a hater. That is the work of the Antichrist. And we are living in those days and time. God is calling upon all of us to repent. Now, surrender our all to him. If there is any inkling, an iota of sin in your heart, Jesus' blood is capable of washing it all what, away. Don't waste time wallowing in what? Sin. Don't. Because tomorrow is not guaranteed any one of us. Because you woke up this morning, doesn't mean that you live through the whole day. Hello, can you hear me? Just because you and I woke up from bed, does not mean that we are going to make it through the whole day. And if you made it through the whole day, thank God for his grace and for his long suffering. That is why every second you and I want to examine ourselves. Search me, O oh Lord, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Who is that person that you don't want to forgive? You have held grudge against that person for so long. You don't want to forgive the person. Who is that person that you are so enraged against that if you had a gun in your hand, you would have shot that person? Who is that person? Who is that person that you are so malicious against? That you waste time and resources to destroy and destroy and destroy and you wish that person were taken off the earth. All these things are in the hearts of many. How and where do you expect to go and spend eternity with all these things in your heart? The Lord is calling upon us to what? To repent. Repent. That's what the word of God says. And this call of repentance goes not only for those on this, but it's for all of the city of Greensboro, the whole of the county of Guilford, the whole of the state of North Carolina, the whole of the nation of America, and the whole of the nations of the whole world. God is calling upon us to repent. More so the church. The pastors, the bishop, the act apostles, and, and secular apostles, and whatever title they, they carry, it does not impress God one whit. It doesn't. None of our titles impress God one whit. None. Because God is well able to raise up stones to proclaim his word. So titles don't impress him. It is your lifestyle. And God is calling upon all of us, whether you be whatever you are, from Pope 
and whatever it is, God is calling upon us to repent, to turn from our wicked ways, to turn from our vile ways, our ways of villainy. God wants us to repent and turn from it. And for those of us who have embraced wholeheartedly this idea of this is a pride month, pride month, and you have also joined into it, that pride will enter into your spirit. And the Bible says pride goes before what? A fall. Let not compromise with sin. Because we are a chosen generation, a peculiar people, a holy nation, a people representative of the divine. The Bible says, you and I are ambassadors for Christ. You and I are what? Ambassadors for what? Christ, Sister Christina. Is that right? We are what? Ambassadors for Christ. And an ambassador represents the nation, the person who appoints you an ambassador, you represent him. And you don't utter a word when he has not what? Uttered it. You lose your job. Hallelujah. You don't conform to the place. Rather, you represent with the culture of what? The person that has sent you. Go to Ghana and you see. America is busy transforming Ghana to look like America. The ambassador is there making sure that Ghanaians speak amen. And then the British also are there making sure that we speak like the British. So we are confused people. We cannot, I cannot, we cannot speak our own language. <laughs> yeah. I can't speak Ghana without mixing some English. For now, even when I go there and I'm speaking, they don't know whether I am Ghanaian or American or whatever it is because the English doesn't flow even well and the whatever. They we don't know if it's American English or British English. You see, because the ambassadors are representing them very well, very well. To the extent that now we don't even spend our own money. We spend the dollar. You go to Ghana, you want to buy something, it is in dollar. I say, when did Ghana become an American? Either dollar or pound sterling. Your own city they will not take. That is how Christ wants us to represent heaven. That the world will so desire everything that heaven does what offers. But we cannot do that when we are looking like what? The world. We can't. We can't. We have to be transformed. Our minds be what? Renewed. Romans chapter 12. Our minds be what? Renewed. Being transformed to conform with the heavenly, not the earthly. Colossians puts it well, and I will let that be a homework for you. Next week, when we come, I'm going to grade it. If you don't come, I will go to double your punishment. So make sure you come. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3. Read it. It says, If you are risen with Christ, set your affections on things what? Above, not on things what? On earth. And it tells us of what to do. It says, put to death, mortify the things of what? Of the flesh. But we love the things of the flesh. We are busy developing the things of what? Of the flesh. And putting to death the things of the spirit. That is what so many of us Christians are doing. So the world cannot tell the difference. We have lost our salt saltiness. And we have also lost the light. And we are groping in what? Darkness. Many are walking in this dark world. They are not sure of the way to take. They are groping in the darkness around without peace, joy, or hope. There is a light can't from God. Jesus Christ is the light of the world to guide and lead us through this life. So we we'll know how to order our steps and so walk home to our God. There is a light sent from God. Jesus Christ is the light of the world to guide and lead us through this life. So we will know how to order our steps and so 
walk beloved this is the God's word I can't add to it anymore nor can I take away from it it is my prayer that it has entered into our hearts it is our prayer that it has had its desired effect on our lives it is our prayer Shall we rise onto our feet and we'll pray? To order our steps and so walk to you have heard the word of God today. The word of God is life. All who surrender and yield to God, to the word of God, have life eternal. When Jesus Christ was crucified, he was crucified publicly. The whole world saw his shame, his nakedness. He took the shame, our shame. He bore our shame on the cross publicly. That is why when we call for you to give your life to Christ, it is always a public declaration that you can come and say, today I am breaking with sin and I'm surrendering my life to Jesus Christ. If you are here amongst us today and you don't know this Jesus Christ that I've spoken about today, the man who hanged on the cross for you and I, the man who was brutally murdered for you and I, if you don't know him as your Lord and personal Savior, the one who is going to sit at the judgment to whom we are going to give account of ourselves to, if you don't know him, this is the opportune time for you to know him. I want to invite you. Don't be ashamed. If you don't know Jesus Christ, why don't you come here? Just come from where you are. Just make a move and come and say, I need Jesus in my life. Or maybe you know him, but you have backslidden. This is the time also to be reconciled to him. Say, I am coming home. I've wandered far away from God. Now I am coming home. Coming home, coming home. Never more to roam. Lord, open wide your arms of love. I am coming home. You can sing that song. Let that song be your song today. I've wandered far away from God. Now I am coming home. The path of sin so long I've trod. Lord, I am coming home. I am coming home. Coming home. Coming home. I'm to roam, open wide my arms of life. Lord, I'm coming. Lift up your hands, lift up your hands before the Lord now. I'm coming home, coming home. Never more.
Jesus Christ, your word I have heard, my heart I surrender to you this day. Have mercy upon me, forgive me for my wanderings, forgive me for my wallowing in sin, wash me, cleanse me, purify me, and make me a new person. Fill my heart this day with your Holy Spirit and give me the grace to live for you to live for you from today forth and forevermore I thank you for hearing me I thank you for hearing me I thank you for hearing me for your name and for your glory sake thank you Jesus Heavenly Father the word you gave unto me I have delivered unto all of us your flock, even your sheep, with their hands lifted up before you, O Lord, in total surrender unto you. I pray that you receive every single one of us. Bury us all in the blood of Jesus Christ. Drown us wholly, completely in the blood. Cause all our iniquities to be washed and purged. Lord, give us new hearts and new minds and new souls and new spirit. Lord, make us into those new persons that your word says that if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. Make us those new persons. Yes, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Make us those new persons after your own heart. Yes, Lord, do this for your glory. Do this for your glory. Do this for your glory. I will give you praise. In Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. 